I get this question all the time. Do you really believe that God would allow lies in his Bible, his holy Bible? This is what I got to say. If you don't believe it, then you don't believe the word of God. Because Most High prophesied long ago that the scribes were going to turn his instructions into a lie in books, in the Bible, in the canon, the famine of the word. Let's go over some of the evidence. Amos chapter 8, verses 11 through 12. Behold, the days are coming. Remember, this is thousands of years ago through his prophet, okay? And this is the most high speaking through his prophet. Behold, the days are coming, declares Yahweh Elohim, which means God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro and seek the words of Yahweh, but they shall not find it. This is the famine of hearing the word of the Most High. In fact, it's prophesied by Yahshua that it wasn't going to be until the very end, the very last sign that the true gospel would be preached everywhere and then the end would come. But I'll get to that. All right, let's go over a subject. Um, the fact people say there's only one God, that doesn't add up. I used to believe it was true, but it's like they hid his name and just put God so that's what makes us think that there's only one Yava. When it says, I am the Lord, it's I am Yava, your Elohim. You shall have no other Elohims before me. So Elohim in English is God. There are many gods, which is just like a strong, powerful leader, ruler, shepherd. But there is only one Yava. Deuteronomy 32, 39. See now that I, even I, am he. And there is no Elohim or God against me. It's another thing they mistranslated on purpose. Okay. There is no Elohim against him. I kill, I make alive, I wound and I heal. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. This is Yahweh, the father most high. All right, going over the evidence, Jeremiah 8, 8. This is Hebrew, so we're going to read right to left. And um, let me just tell you some of these words, like the last word where it says the scribe, that's a mistranslation. That's actually books, okay? How can you say wise we or we are? And the law, which the law simply means the Torah, the instructions of Yahweh with us. Truly look, falsehood works, the pen. And, and right here, it's like they made deception in books. This is a mistranslation. So he's telling us it was the scribes that turned his law into a lie. Now, I spoke of this one earlier, Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel, not just any gospel, this gospel, this gospel referring to what Yahshua taught, what did he teach? He said, if you want to have eternal life, keep the law, keep the instructions of God, his commandments, even the least of them, do and teach. But he prophesied this, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a, a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. That's the very last sign. 
So what gospel has everyone been preaching? Well, the majority of the churches, which make up the beast, have been preaching the gospel of the Antichrist. The you're saved by faith and not by works. Just confess out your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that he died and rose and you're saved. That is a lie. And I'll get to that. The true gospel is what Yashur preached. And we as true disciples are to continue in his word and not be tripped up and not to allow his word to be choked by the leaven teaching of the Pharisee, in particularly Paul, or it could be Muhammad or any of the many antichrists that came after Yahshua. All right, our next little chunk of evidence, Matthew 23, 13. This is out Yasher's mouth. But woe to you, scribes. Who are the scribes? Those are the ones that translated the scrolls and put it in the Bible, that mistranslated a lot of the scrolls and put it in the Bible. And Pharisees. Who's the Pharisee? Paul, the one that sewed right alongside the word of God. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. What is a hypocrite? Is when they say something, but do something totally different. They preach one way, but they themselves don't go according to their own preaching. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces for you neither enter yourself nor allow those who would enter to go in. They have hidden the truth. What is the truth? The word of God. This is the gospel of Thomas saying 39. It says Jesus said, which is Joshua, the Pharisees and the scribes have taken the keys of knowledge and have hidden them. They did not go in. And those who wish to go in, they did not allow. But you be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Wisdom is the law of God. Wisdom is, is going according to God's instructions. They tried to hide that from us and act like that was no longer a requirement. But if you pay attention and continue in the word of God, it has always been a requirement and will always be a requirement. Another great chunk of evidence, Matthew 13, 44. Pay attention to this, y'all. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. So this parable is very telling because it's letting us know the truth has been hidden and we must find it like a hidden buried treasure. And it's we have to be willing to give up everything for the kingdom of heaven. This is why Yasha told us to sit down and count the cost. He, he said a parable about it. It's not no free gift grace gospel like Paul lied and said. Yahshua showed us the way. He came to earth and he was willing to give up everything to do the will of his father. And we must follow him. Pick up our cross and follow him. He fulfilled all the law. Not so we didn't have to. Not because we couldn't do it. No, to show us the way. Now we have to pick up our cross and follow him. And all things are possible with God. This is also another great one. John chapter 5, 39 through 44. This is Joshua speaking to the Pharisees that did not love him. Get, get what he says. You search the scriptures because you think in them. You have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory from people, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. 
I have come in my father's name. That also means his father's authority, his father's law, his instructions. And you do not receive me. They don't want to keep God's instructions. And if another shall, it says shall in another translation, come in his own name, in his own authority, his own law, which is exactly what Paul did, you will receive him. And most people are receiving the false gospel of Paul. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and not seek the glory that comes from the one and only God? Now, this here is a picture of Marcus Rogers. I used to believe that he was truly in the truth. Now I know he's a Pharisee. He is one of the ones that I believe Yasha will say, um, what did he say? He said, they'll come and they'll say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name or demons in your name? Didn't we do all these miracles in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. If you don't go according to God's law, then you don't know God. Because if you know God, you know the, the true God, Yahweh, and his son, then you know what he came here to preach, the law, the commandments of God. If you want life, you keep the commandments, even the least of the commandments from the law. And yes, he was referring to the law God gave Moses, not just the Ten Commandments. No, he said even the least of them. And I'll get to that because he was referring when um, to many things. He said when they were tiding mint and coming, and yet they were leaving out the weightier matters of the law, which God gave Moses. He said to do those first without leaving the others undone. We are to, to keep and teach even the least of the commandments. This right here is a tree. It looks like it's coming out the Bible. And I don't know if it's the tree of knowledge or the tree of um, life, but I can tell you one thing. Both the tree of life is in the Bible and the tree of knowledge of good and evil is in the Bible. And it's up to you to decide which one you want to eat of. Are you going to eat from the word of God are you going to think you're wise in your own eyes? Are you going to depend on man, depend on the very Pharisee Yahshua told you not to believe? The one he told you was coming after him that would deceive many. The false Christ he said was coming in the wilderness that recruited a false apostle, the false apostle Paul. Both of those trees you can find in the Bible. It's up to you who you will eat from will you eat from the word of God or will you eat from the seed of Satan? Yahshua came in the word of God. He was the word of God manifested in the flesh. Paul was the word of the devil, Satan manifested in the flesh. And it is up to each and every person to decide who they believe in. You cannot have two masters. You cannot have two instructors. You cannot have two teachers. It was a test. Right here, this circle, that's my daughter. She has been putting her faith in people, but that will soon change. Yeah, I believe that. Put your trust in God. Follow him. You think you have eternal life in the scriptures, but unless you're keeping the commandments of God, that is life. And I'll get to that too. Matthew 7, 13 through 14. This is about you finding life, finding it, y'all. Enter by the narrow gate, also called the straight gate. When I say, yeah, sure, that's the straight gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. Saul, Sheol is another word for destruction. And those who enter by it are many. The gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. 
and those who find it are few. You got a choice. Are you going to go by what Yasher said to do? Go by that narrow gate and keep the commandments? Are you going to go by that wide gate, that Pauline gate that, that tells you all you have to do is confess out your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he died and rose to be saved? That is a lie. You have to keep the law. Yasher never taught that lie. Every time anyone asked him about how do you have eternal life, he said, keep the law, keep the commandments. How do you read it? He made it real simple, but it's up to you what gate you decide to enter. Who do you believe? Everyone says they believe in Jesus. Most people don't even know his name or the true gospel he taught. Okay, this is a really good one right here. John chapter 8, 31 through 32. This is Joshua speaking. I'm going to read both translations. The bottom one, it's more accurate, but they're both correct. If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciple. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Notice you're supposed to continue in his teaching, continue in his word. Paul literally chopped it up and made it seem like, oh, after he... um. After he was resurrected, everything changed. No, no, nothing changed. You hold to his teaching. John 8, 31 through 32. This is the more accurate version. If you continue, continue in my word, you are really my disciple. Then you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. There's all these people casting out demons and doing all these things, but they're not free indeed. Yahshua will make you free indeed. It is the truth that makes you free. That's why his disciples, his true apostles were told to preach his word. That is what, that is what saves. Preaching that word and that person continuing in that word, obeying that word. That is what sets us free from the lie, from the lie, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, from a person thinking they're wise in their own eyes, but they're not wise. That's called self-righteousness. Self-righteous is when you think you're righteous instead of depending on God's law, his instruction and what he said is righteous. Now we're going to get to the true gospel. How do you really have eternal life? Luke chapter 10, 25 through 26. And a lawyer stood up and put him to the test saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Yahshua said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? Notice he said how you read it. How many times has he warned us of these scribes? This is why it, it was spoken and prophesied that the truth would be revealed in the last days. Knowledge would go to and fro, and then people would have the tools to translate for themselves and see what exactly what these, these evil, wicked scribes intentionally hidden. Like they took the word lawless and they changed it to iniquity. They took the word obey and they changed it to believe. There's so many, but that's up for you to seek and find it. Those that seek him will find him. If you want eternal life, you must keep the law of Yahweh. That is eternal life. Okay, here's an, another really good one. The true gospel, Matthew 19, 17. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. What commandments? The commandments and the law that God gave Moses. Matthew 5, 17 through 20. These are the very commandments that Shiloh, Saul, Paul, destruction, tried to do away with. Do you think, oh, I'm sorry, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, 
but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. And the law is his instructions and not just instruction. Every single thing he said would happen, including him coming, including the worthless, foolish shepherd coming. Paul already fulfilled that prophecy, including people being deceived and including in the last days, people returning to the truth, returning to the true gospel. It didn't say a lot, but his true people will be taught the true gospel and real return to his word, his law. Whoever then annuls one of the least of these commandments, which commandments? The commandments in his law and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and that of your boy, Paul, the Pharisee, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Don't think you're going to get into the kingdom of heaven being like Paul. You follow Paul, Paul's going to take you directly to hell with him. All right, y'all, this is the tree of life. John chapter three, verse five. No one, no one can enter the kingdom of Yava unless he is born of the water. Most people don't know what that water is, but I'm going to get to that. And the spirit. What's the spirit? The Holy Spirit. What is that water? Psalms 1, chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. This is King David speaking. King David is the resurrected Yahshua. Yes, Jesus, Yahshua is King David. He has many names, many crowns. He was also Jacob, Machesodek, Joshua. I could, I don't know them all truthfully. I think I know quite a few though. King David is the Messiah. The Jews and the Christians have the same Messiah, although most of the Jews didn't recognize him coming uh, when he returned, okay? And most of the Christians don't even follow their own Messiah. They're too busy following Paul. But yes, they have the same Messiah. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. What is a scoffer? Paul is a scoffer, someone that tries to discredit the law of God. But his delight is in what? The law of Yahweh. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree. Remember, Yahshua said, you'll know them by their fruits. He referred to men as trees. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water. What is that water? That is the law that yields its fruit in its season and its leaves do not wither. The tree of life is obeying the law of God and, and the water is, is the law. The tree is the person. So if you want to be the tree, like a tree of life that never withers, it's, it's fruit in due season and its leaf will not wither, mean you'll never die. You best start obeying the law of God. There's two trees. There's the tree of life, which obeying God's instructions, and then the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thinking you get to decide what's right and wrong. And, and you thinking you're wise in your own eyes leaning on your own understanding and nullifying the word of God, nullifying wisdom. All right. This is Matthew 23, 2 through 11. Let me just clarify something. Matthew was originally in Hebrew. Now there is a man that broke down this verse and translated it from Hebrew. And it has such a deeper, more clear meaning. What it is, is um, Yahshua is telling us to listen to Moses and not the Pharisees. But I'm going to leave that link either in my comment section or, um, well, I'm going to leave it a couple places on my page. So I suggest you watch 
you watch it where they break down the translation. A lot has been hidden in translation, but I still understand it just like it is here. When the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, what does that mean? There's Well, Moses actually had a seat he would sit in and he would read from the Torah, which is the law of God. So when they're doing this, so do do and observe whatever Moses tells you, but not the works the Pharisees do. I'm going to even say when they're reading from the book of God's law, do it, everything they're telling you. As long as they're telling you the law of God, do it. But don't do what they do. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their, I can't say this word right, but whatever it is, it's this little box thing in the upper right-hand corner. It's this little thing that has little scrolls in it. They made their scrolls. I assume they enlarged them. They probably made them real long or real wide. I'm not sure. Just to be seen by men to appear to be righteous, okay? And their tassels long. If you look in the right hand, uh, right corner, that's the man with his tassels. His don't look very long, I don't think. But they made them really long because they wanted to appear to be righteous before men. They love the place of honor at the feast and the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. Get this, y'all. But you, he's talking to his real apostles, but you are not to be called rabbi. What does rabbi mean? Teacher. For you have one teacher and you are all brothers. So all y'all listening to Paul, Paul is not your teacher. If you're a true disciple of Yahshua, you have one teacher. Okay. Why do you think he told his apostles this? He already knew what was coming. And no and no man on earth, your father, call no man on earth, your father, not even your biological dad. OK, for you have one father who is in heaven. That's another thing Paul did. He tried to say he begot you through his gospel and he ain't lying, because if you're dumb enough to listen to his false gospel, well, then he tricked you and he's taking you to hell with him. You are not a child of God. You are a terror and will be thrown into the lake of fire along with all the other false disciples, those pretenders, those that confess out their mouth that they love God, but they're following man instead of the word of God. Neither be called instructor for you have one instructor, the Christ, the Messiah, the greatest among you shall be. Our God is a jealous God. All righty, Matthew 13, 25. This is, um, let me set the scene. Yahshua came and he sowed seeds. His seeds are his words and they produce wheat. The wheat are the children of God, okay? But after he came and he ascended to heaven, guess what? This is where this takes place. But while everyone was asleep, nobody knew what was going on. His enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and slipped away. What are those weeds? Those are seeds that produce tares, that produce the children of the devil, devils, okay? Because if you listen to the devil, well, then you're a child of the devil. <laughs> he did this among the wheat. What are the wheat? The wheat are God's true children, and that's exactly what Paul did. He did it right alongside the true apostles, mm -hmm. right alongside the true apostles. This is why um, John said, though they went out from us, they were not of us. He was referring to the Antichrist. He was referring, he was talking to the church of Ephesus and he was referring to Acts 19 when, when John and Paul and Paul's followers went out. That's a whole nother thing. Anyways. Don't allow Paul to choke the word of God. This is what Paul does. He's trying to choke the truth, trying to twist it up, add that leaven in there and choke it. He 
pretended to be a sheep, but he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. He was the lawless one. And he tells you himself, Yasher said not to have two masters. Okay. But what did Paul say? All things are lawful unto me. Of course, you're lawless. Of course, everything's law lawful for you. But all things are not expedient or beneficial, depending on what verse you, what translation you read. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. And another verse says, I will not be mastered by anyone. They try to put anything. No, that's another thing, how they hid, how perverted he was. It's anyone. Yasher said not to have two masters, but the seed of Satan decided he was going to have no master. Paul's the Antichrist. He's the one that slipped in while everyone was, uh, or out. He, he's the one that crept in while everyone was sleeping. And so those words, his words are the seeds that produce tares. And it's up to you whose words will you eat? Will you eat the word of God? Or will you eat the very Pharisee he told you not to believe just because it was sown in the Bible? Hmm. You better figure that one out. All right. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What is knowledge, y'all? God's instruction is true knowledge. His law, Torah. Because you have rejected, not because they weren't shown, not because somebody didn't try to teach them. No, because you have rejected knowledge. That should told you to keep the law. He told you to keep the commandments because you have rejected knowledge. I will reject you from being a priest to me. Who's the high priest? Yahshua is the high priest. We are supposed to be his disciples. To, to, we're supposed to repeat what he taught us, but he's rejecting those that reject his law. So all these false preachers and ministers and evangelists and that, that tell you we're no longer under the law of God, those are all going to be rejected unless, unless they repent and start teaching the law of God. And since you have forgotten what the law of your Elohim, Yahweh, I will also forget your sons. Psalms 19, 7. The law of Yahweh is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statues of Yahweh are trustworthy making wise the simple. That's how you receive true knowledge, true wisdom from God. Now this is Torah. This is what Torah means, the law. This is what the law means, direction, instruction, law, Torah. Anyone that would tell you, oh, we no longer have to obey God's instruction. No, we go by the world's instruction now is a pure idiot, a pure devil. And speak of the devil, here he is. <clears throat> Here's Paul, Romans 13, 1. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. Really, what God? The devil? That God? And those that exist have been instituted by God. Really, what God? Your God, Satan? What does Yahshua say? John 18, 36. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. Yeah, if there was no authority except from God, do you think they would have wanted to kill the authorities? Would have wanted to kill the Messiah, they couldn't kill him. He laid his life down. By the way, nobody took it from him. He laid it down and picked it right back up again because the Most High gave him that power. Paul totally contradicts the truth. 
he will have you bowing down to the beast and worshiping the beast, which are what people are doing when they're heeding to his word. When Yahshua said not, not to believe him and to continue in the word of God and to keep the law, keep the commandments, even the least of them. Hosea 4, 8, they made kings, but not through me. They set up princes, but without my approval. Hold on, I thought there was no authority except from, yeah, you know what? Paul will have you worshiping the devil in a minute. They set up princes, but without my approval, with their silver and gold, they made idols for their own destruction. Y'all better heed the word of God and stop playing. All righty, Isaiah 29, 13 through 14. Now, before I read this, now remember how Paul said you're saved, which is a bunch of BS. He said, all you have to do is confess out your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, your wicked, deceitful heart that he died and rose for you. Okay, that's what he said. But listen to what Yahweh said. Because these people draw near to me with what? Their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Why are their hearts far from him? Because their fear of me is commandments taught by men. Paul. Therefore, I will again confound, again confound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will vanish and the intelligent of the intelligent will be hidden. Now, how do we really get saved? First of all, we have to endure until the end. Those that endure until the end by keeping the commandments of the law of God and the testimony of Yahshua, those will be saved. Because a pair of lips will say anything. Paul taught us nothing but lies. We are judged according to our works. He said that it's not by works, it's by faith. But what did James, the brother of Yahshua said? He said works, faith, I'm sorry, faith without works is dead. Just like Paul is dead, faith without works is dead. We are judged and justified by our works. Yahshua even said it. He said it like in a riddle because he knew what these scribes would do. He said, well, how did he say it? Something like, but wisdom is justified by the works of her. Don't refuse wisdom. For it, wisdom is the law and is justified by its works. Pay attention to what he says. Revelations 2012. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yava, and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the book according to their works. When it says deeds, that's also works. They, they like to interchange those two words just to kind of throw you off. But look at the original Greek word. They're the same. Revelation 2.23, I will give, I will give unto each one, a, each one of you according to your works. Matthew 16.27, the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he will reward every man according to his deeds, which is works, y'all. I'm out. I hope you know that it's not the Bible that saves. It's obeying the word of God in the Bible, seeking that word out, verifying it. He warned us of the scribes. Anyone with the brain know the scribes translated the scrolls into the Bible. It is our job. It is the last days we have the knowledge where we can translate it ourselves, and we are required to seek him like a hidden buried treasure. Those that seek him with all their heart will find him. Those that obey this, I think is John 3, 36. And you have to look at this in interlinear ESV. Those that obey and believe the word of God are those that have everlasting life. 
those that do not obey and believe, well, the wrath of God remains on them. But I'm out. God bless y'all. Yahweh bless y'all because there's many gods. Most high bless you and the holy, the holy most high God in glory and his son, the Messiah, King David, Yahshua. He has many names, Jacob, Israel, Joshua. Um, I don't even know him. I'm pretty sure Job, Machesodek, many names, many crowns. And he's coming in a new name that nobody knows but himself. And he's giving you a name if you make it that only you know.